Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the Google Pixel 8 Pro and see how this particular phone holds up in 2024. Now, the thing I will definitely tell you about the Pixel 8 Pro is that this is still a very interesting phone. I think this is one of the best phones you can buy in this market. It's not a perfect device like I mentioned before in almost every single device, but it's still one of those phones that I'd look at. I think this is a very, very good phone. If you like a big phone, it doesn't get that much crazier better than this. Unless you want to go and spend a little bit more money on something like a Galaxy S24 Ultra, these phones have gone down in value a ton since they first came out. Like they're almost like half the price than they first originally came out in the used market and even on Amazon. And even on Amazon. So if you want to pick up some of these phones that I would recommend buying this year, including this one, the links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with outside of the Google Pixel 8 Pro. The thing you have to remember with this particular device is that Google knocked it out of the park with this device without a doubt. The front of this phone is basically giving you a 6.7 inch LTPO OLED display. It's a 120 hertz panel and it gets up to 2400 nits of brightness. It's a whole punch panel, pretty much very little size around it. And when I look at this particular panel and this you know, device, I will definitely tell you, this is one of the best displays Google's ever put on any device. It looks beautiful, it looks great, and definitely without a doubt, it gets a thumbs up for me from that perspective. I look at this device, I'm very, very happy with it. And I mean, I'll tell you, it doesn't get that much better from, you know, a design perspective, from a, you know, display perspective than this particular phone. It for sure, without a doubt, gets a thumbs up for me. And it is easily one of my most favorite things going on for this particular device when it comes down to it. Now, on top of that, very thin bezels around it. And the sides of this phone are almost completely flat. It's a little curved. It's not like super like flat by any means, but it is like a kind of like a flat phone, which I actually like a lot. I like getting these phones that have modern designs. When I looked at the Pixel 7, it didn't really look that modern or as modern as it could be. The thing I like a lot about the Pixel 8 is that not only are the you know flat and like sides kind of like flat, you're also getting these curved you know you know corners. So it's a little bit more curved. It's much easier to hold in the hand. And when I look at this device, it kind of gives me the impression that it is overall a better one from that perspective than maybe something like the you know Google Pixel 7 from that side. So that right there is like another kind of minor thing to kind of keep in mind there too. On top of that, on the bottom, USB Type-C port. It's the only charging port available on this phone. On the back side, you are getting this frosted kind of glass bag. So this was kind of the first time Google's ever thrown a frosted glass bag inside of a device. And I think that was another interesting thing that Google kind of did here. Like they didn't really have to do that, but the fact that they did was another super cool thing going on here for this particular phone too. And that definitely, without a doubt, got a thumbs up for me for sure as well. So that was another really cool thing that they threw from a design perspective on this particular phone too, which was honestly very, very nice. Now you're getting this triple camera setup on the back side. You're getting very good build quality, IP certification, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, lots and lots of good stuff going on for this particular device. And this, without a doubt, is another really nice thing going on for this particular device too. So when I look at something like the Google Pixel 8 Pro, without a doubt, definitely gives a thumbs up for me from the outside perspective. But from the you know camera, I mean, from the price perspective too, this is another nice thing because this phone doesn't really cost as much as it used to. It's been available for a few, I mean, months now. And much like most other Google phones, they go down in value quite a bit. So you can easily go and buy something like the Google Pixel 8 Pro and still get a phone that's still going to be giving you very good performance, top tier performance for the most part. And it doesn't cost as much as it used to. You can like buy this phone in the used market for hundreds and hundreds of dollars cheaper than it used to cost. And even on Amazon, it still costs like $550. So this in and of itself is another really nice thing going on for this particular phone when it comes down to it as well. Now from the camera side, this is another nice thing going on for this particular phone too. So you're getting a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, 48 megapixel telephoto lens, and then a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera. And on the front side, you're getting a 10.5 megapixel ultra wide camera. So the thing I will tell you, first of all, you're able to do 4K at 60 on the front and the back of this particular phone. And having an ultra wide camera on the front is really nice because you can easily just zoom out a ton and be able to capture video and photos in ultra wide mode, which is actually a really, really nice touch as well. The only thing you're going to have to kind of keep in mind with this particular phone though, is that if you're already going the Android route, it is actually nice to be able to film in 8K or have a phone that's able to film in 8K. Unfortunately, with a phone like the you know Google Pixel 8 Pro, you cannot film in that resolution. 
And when compared to something like the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultras that can film in that resolution, that right there is one thing where I look at this phone and I'm kind of a little bit happier with the end, you know, the Samsung side. But regardless, this phone is still giving you very good filming capability, very good videos that you can film in. And Google has spent a ton of time and effort and money on their whole entire AI side. So a lot of their photos and videos have gotten a lot better from the AI side as well, which is another nice thing going on for this particular phone when it comes down to it. So from the camera side, I will definitely tell you the Google Pixel Pro definitely gets a thumbs up for me for sure from that perspective as well. Now on top of that, the software side is probably one of the craziest things going on for the Pixel 8 Pro in 2024. When Google first made this phone, they were making a phone that was still going to be here that's going to be supported for a long period of time. That's kind of how a lot of Google phones kind of, you know, are created. It's a super cool thing and I love that, that thing about these phones. But the other crazy thing going on here was that Google basically threw in a bunch. I mean, it was insane what they did here. They like lengthened the time of the software updates like twice the amount. So this phone almost could last twice as longer as basically something as like the Google Pixel 7 in this case. So it's seven years of software and security updates, which is actually pretty crazy in and of itself. That's a very cool thing. I'm very happy the way Google made, you know, made this phone. And I mean, this phone is just getting started. Think about it. For the next like two or three years, this phone is probably going to be like halfway through its life cycle, which is crazy. And looking forward, I am a very big fan of the way this phone has been approaching that particular lifestyle from that side as well. So it definitely gives a thumbs up for me without a doubt. Now from the performance side, like with the chipset and everything, this phone is giving you that Google Tensor G3 chipset inside with 12 gigabytes of RAM inside of it. That is a good amount of RAM to have inside of a phone. You know, it's not the most insane amount of RAM, but it's still a very good amount of RAM to have inside of a device. And this in and of itself is another very cool thing going on for this particular phone because the performance of this particular device is actually very, very good. It's a very good performing phone. And realistically speaking, no matter what you throw inside of a device, it's going to be giving you a very good experience from this particular side, which I'm actually a humongous fan. The thing you have to keep in mind with the Pixel 8 Pro is that, you know, it's going to be a very good performing device, which is something I like a lot. You know, no matter what you throw at it, it's going to be good, heavy, intensive games. I've tested almost every single game you can think of on this particular phone, and it's given me a very solid experience. On top of that, really, like, I've done so many things on this phone. I've compared it against the Samsung Galaxies, against the iPhones, and this phone has, you know, done a really good job. But I still say, compared to Snapdragon, I think those Snapdragon chipsets may have been a little bit better in a lot of ways. But I do look at a phone like the, you know, Google Pixel, you know, 8 Pro as still being one of the top tier phones, not only from the performance, but also battery life. This one is giving you a 5,050 million power battery. That is a very big size battery to have inside of a device. And I do think this in and of itself is another very, very cool thing going on for this particular phone when it kind of comes down to it. So I will tell you to kind of sum up this entire video. I look at a device like the Google Pixel 8 Pro and I'm a massive fan of it. I think this phone is very good and you know there are definitely phones that are better than this one in some ways. You know you can look at a phone like the Google Pixel you know, 8 Pro as being a good phone, a great phone, but the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is more of a flagship in some ways. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has some features up its sleeve too like maybe the you know, performance here and there could be better, but I think the Pixel 8 Pro for what you're getting is a very good phone. You know I like this phone a lot and if I'm going to go and buy a phone I, I definitely would recommend buying a device like this because it's just going to give you so much capability for sure. So from that side, that kind of covers it up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.